Now we're going to take a look at equations with tape diagrams. This lesson is day one, lesson three, in unit three. When will you teach this lesson? Let's take a look at the big picture to find out. This lesson is actually taught in both Math 7 and Math 8. So when we take a look at Math 7, you'll see it's in the second nine weeks. The activity that we're going to do today is actually on day one of four days given for this lesson. There's many activities within this one lesson. For Math 7 Accelerated, this is still in the first nine weeks. And this lesson will be done across four days between weeks eight and weeks nine. Our activity today would still be day one, but you can see that this lesson once again is expanded over four days. So we're gonna take a look at the standards, the teacher tips and presentation strategies. We'll find all these and more in the scope and sequence. For math seven, this will be standard nine and Math 7 Accelerated Standard 21. Okay, in the helpful teacher tips, there's a list of materials needed. This is actually um, cut off because there's actually more activities used for this lesson. But today we're gonna focus on Tape Diagrams for Real World Problems, which is an Engage New York lesson. And here are the presentation strategies that you could use with your students. Now this video is actually going to focus on just learning to use those tape diagrams. Okay, so taking a look at our first example. For his birthday, Zach and three of his friends went to a movie. They each got a ticket for $8 and the same snack from the concession stand. If Zach's mom paid $48 for the group's tickets and snacks, how much did each, each snack cost? And here you can see that it gives you the equation that represents the situation when S is the cost in dollars of one snack. Now, notice up at the top, this is method one. Okay, and I find this very interesting. This is a great way for some of your visual learners to see the equation better rather than just an algebraic model. Okay, so visually when you take a look at this and I'm trying to figure out what S is, I think my first thought would be to take these chunks and I can see that each section is the same and each section is an equal part of this $48. So what we would do is divide this total 48 in each section by 4 divided into 4 equal parts. We can do that by dividing by 4 or multiplying by 1 fourth, which is what's used in the lesson for the, the teacher guide. And when we do that, we find out that one section is going to be equal to the S plus 8. And from the $48, the equal share of the $48 is $12. So over here in the equation, once again, this is a great method along with the diagram model so that students can see the equation side by side with the tape diagram. From this point, it's a simple one step equation where they subtract eight from both sides and S is equal to four. Same example, but a different method because different students see things differently. Some of your students who are visual, they may prefer this model, whereas some of them are more algebraic, they may prefer the next one. So let's take a look at an alternate way of seeing this. Some of your students might have just said, snack and a snack and a snack and a snack, plus the $8 for each person to get in. Now, if this is set up with the distributor property, the first thing we're gonna see is that we can chunk or place these like terms together and place these like terms together as well. 
So here you have 4s and this side is 32. Algebraically, what that would look like is 4s plus 32 is equal to 48. Now, my next step in solving this would be to, since I know the value of this side, would be to take it away from the total, and that will leave me whatever is left on this side. So in the equation, I would subtract 32 from both sides. This side would go away. And what I would have left after I subtracted 32 from both sides is that 4s would equal 16. So the amount that's left after I took that 32 away is going to be $16. So this 4s is the same thing as the $16. And now, once again, I have a one-step equation. I'll divide both sides by 4, dividing this into four equal sections. And if I divide this into four equal sections, when I do the same here, I'm going to end up with S is equal to four. So the snacks cost $4 each. Once again, this could have been dividing both sides by four or multiplying both sides by one fourth. So these are the two different methods. And once again, I feel like it's important to demonstrate both of those to your students because some will see it one way and some will see it another. Okay, so for example two, I would like for you to press pause and I would like for you to recall the two methods that we used on example one to see if you can model those on your paper with these, with this example. Press pause now and press play when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so here's example two, method one. Remember that this method was the one where we just divided it into equal chunks to begin with. And what we're left with is 3b is equal to 6 miles. So I showed my work over here on the side. And so if 3 plus b is equal to 6 miles, then when I subtract 3 from both sides, I get 3 miles. By the way, my order is a little different than the original example because I felt like students would take the 3 miles she did in the morning plus the bike miles in the afternoon. So that's the order of the day it occurred and that all those together would give you 30 miles. Method two, they would take each of the threes, the three miles from each morning and lump those together and then take the all the bees, the five different bees for the number of miles that she biked in the afternoon lump all those together when i do that that's the same as distributing and i have 15 plus 5b is equal to 30. so here i've noted that the 5b is the same thing as 15 and i get 15 when i take this 30 and subtract this 15 that i already knew about from the number of miles that she biked in the morning and that's where that 15 comes from I would divide each of these B's. I should have drew my lines here. So I divide this into five equal parts. I would divide the 15 into five equal parts and the number of miles that she biked would be three. All right, take a look at example three. I would like for you to press pause, draw the tape diagram to represent the problem, then write the equation and solve. When you're done, press play to check your work. Okay, just to answer the question before we move on, let's make a note of what we think a student might take notice, not may, might not take notice of. In my opinion, this is going to be the the sides that are not labeled, possibly the left-hand side and also the top and bottom shelf. 
as you walk around when your students are working on this problem, just take notice to make sure that they're including all the sides and shelves of this bookcase. So when I did this problem, I did the two sides, the left and the right, and then I had two shelves, but I also know that the shell, the top and the bottom are the same length as each of the shelves. And I labeled that across the top. Now on my original green marker, you can see that all this together was 16 feet. Okay. Then I put my fours together, two of the fours, and I got eight. Plus I had four of the shelf length. So here I find that this is eight, and I wanna take this eight from the 16 total feet that I have, which leaves me with eight feet left. Try not to get hung up on the fact that this length is eight, and this length is also eight, because remember these are variables, so their amount varies. So don't get hung up on, you want them all to be the same, because when the problem starts, we don't know how long the S is. All right, so we've made it to 16 minus eight was eight. For S, we divide each of these, this four S into four separate parts. If I divide that eight feet into four separate parts, each part will be two feet long. And our example four, press pause, write an equation that could represent this tape diagram then annotate it as you show your work and solve. When you're finished, press play to check your work. So for this example, it's a little different because on this one, you see that we have this broken, we don't know what's here. And after reading the problem, you finally figured out it's because we don't know how many hours, because this represents the cost for one hour, this represents the cost for another hour, but we don't know how many hours for $12 each is going to equal the 58 after that $10 for the first hour. Now, in this, in the teacher notes, the teacher guide on the actual Engage New York lesson, this one's solved a couple different ways. One is algebraically. The other is more of a guess and check. And I wanted to discuss this and just show you this on the paper. So what they did is they said, well, this is their guess and check. We got 10 plus 12 plus 12. Well, 10, 12, and 12 give me 24 plus the 10, 34. That's not enough. We know that we need 58 because 58 is what's listed above. So Two didn't work, so let's try three. When we add that up, it equals 46. That's still not enough. So then we're gonna try the last one. And when I add up four of the 12s, that gives me 48 plus another 10 gives me 58, so that's my solution. Now, I thought of it a little different, and I'm gonna share that option. So here's the diagram again. And what I did is I chopped off that 10 and then I took that away from the 58. So what's left here is the 48. And I feel like if your students see this, see it this way, then they are working that, they are doing that deductive reasoning and figuring out how to solve this equation. So after that, all I need to know is how many 12s equal 48? How many groups of 12 make up 48? And that equation I can write out. And most of them will be able to do that in their head, but just so I can show it algebraically, I have 12x is equal to 48. And we divide both sides by 12, so four hours, which is exactly what they got on um, their guess and check method.